Hello, Rupa here from Crafters Corner. Uh, I'm back with a video tutorial today and uh, this time we're going to play with some Kedans products. So I had showed you a video on the products that I had got as part of the DT kit from Crafters Corner. Here are some of the Kedans products that we'll be working with today. This is the stencil spray and then we have the beat on effect relief paste which gives you the concrete kind of look and then there is the decoupage glue from uh, Kedans and then I have the artist's vintage gesso this is the vintage gesso and I have them in two colors and of course the other accessories the brush and the rollers basically and also the lovely stencils from Kedans which I would be talking to you as I'm working with them Kedans is a Turkish company and they are into art and hobby paints basically into home decor so lots of lovely products to play with and then I'm planning to do a home decor project today so let's see how that goes first things first let me move everything aside and then show you what i'm starting off with i have this mdf blank this is 12 inches by 12 inches and uh, that's what i'm going to be working with so what i did was i have primed it with gesso yeah here it is prime primed it with gesso it's nice and white and dry and secondly what I have with me is an old CD an unused CD which I'm going to upcycle okay so I've just sanded it on the front and the back just to give it some tooth and what I intend doing is sponging in some gesso onto the CD also dabbing some gesso onto the CD CD is nice and primed and I'm drying it right now. Given two coats of gesso, just so to cover the entire uh, top surface, I don't want any colors sticking up from the original CD. Let's go to the next step, Cadence Decoupage Plus Glue. This is, uh, um, you can use this with paper, fabric, especially for rice paper. But today we're going to work with a tissue. I have this lovely tissue here. It's a colorful one and I intend to place this here in the CD. So let's get started. Where is my brush? Yes. So I'm going to just take some glue and then give a thin coat all over the CD. then stick the tissue okay so that's there and I want you to okay the CD is all uh, dry now I have sealed it from the top also let me take a sandpaper and then take off all the overhangings There you go, chopping the legs. Okay. So that's done. Just a little touch up on the sides with the gesso. And then, yeah, it's done. And then we have the center. Giving it okay. So the center is also sealed. No overhangs. So that's pretty much the elephant on the CD now, ready to go. The center of the panel. Let me give the MDF blank here. Okay, so I shall stick this in the center with a wood glue. It's up to you. You can use gel medium so that there is some tooth for it to take on to the glue or the paint that we're planning to use. Okay, 
this so that's pretty much blue okay i've applied the blue sorry if i'd gone off camera and let me position the elephant now okay that's the center i'm always safe with the plastic sheet because my hands forever are soiled either with glue or paint and i don't want to okay so i think that's the center so as we're working on this i think the cd will uh, adhere to the plank not an issue it's not going to move anyways let's move on to the next step i want to show you the uh, lovely stencils that we have from Kedans. Here's one. Look at the size. I don't think I can show it to you on the camera. It's a nice big one, uh, probably for your cushion covers and larger projects and canvas and other home decor items that you can use it for. The stencil measures. almost 18 inches that's the yeah outer size the 18 inches you can pretty much see how big that stencil is and then i have one more stencil here which is also big now this one measures outer size is almost 14 so you can imagine the size of the stencils that we're going to work with okay let's get started teeny and before i start stenciling i want to give a mask to the elephant which is already there so i'm going to take another old uh, cd place it here just so that i don't spoil the elephant and i also know where i'm working okay so there it is so now i can pretty much work safely all around okay and i have uh, so for this step you can use any paints of your choice i have two paints here two colors on my mat and i'm going to take the roller let's try the roller so we've always been using sponges or brushes to do the uh, stenciling let's see how the roller works so for that i need to show you how to load the paint so here it is i hope you can see me okay so i'm just dipping a little bit of this color and this color and yeah so i'm just looking at blending these two colors on the mat you can see the colors blending here the light and the dark okay and that done let me pull this now and let's do a quick roll of the colors so here it is so this gives you again a nice i like the finish that comes with the roller just like you're sponging but then you have a bigger space to work and then you go at it in one shot just look at that just look at that okay so we're going to load more color i'm trying to work with complementing colors from the tissue okay so this is basically the green greens light and the dark greens and before i make a mistake let me shift the stencil i have intentionally not put a stencil uh, adhesive to this because i wanted to move the stencil okay so here i am i've done the stenciling on all the sides very little paint that i've used thanks to the roller and I'm going to lift this up and look at that lovely gradation of shades. I hope you can see it. Okay, so I have a little pattern missing here. Let me complete that. I didn't realize that. Let me keep that. So 
distance way back. Okay. And then the lines and complete on all sides. Basically, I wanted to show you how the blending happens so beautifully. And if I can come closer, I can show you the texture too. The texture from the sponge. You can see it nice and fine spots there. That's precisely what I wanted. And let's see what's happening here. Yeah, my elephant is intact. Looks beautiful with that background. So let's move on to the next step. This is pretty much dry because we've been working with the roller and it picks up very little paint and blends at the same time. So this part is done. We move on to the next step. I'm going to take the next stencil to work on here. And uh, not to miss the sides, what I'm going to do is whatever paint is left from the roller, I'm just going to roll it up. Just to get the roller off on the sides. Picked up all the paint, my mat is nice and clean. I've dipped the roller onto a pot of water, it's sinking, sinking in there. Next, from the jumbo stencil, we go to a large stencil. So you can see this pattern here. It's a nice star. You can call it a star. You can call it a doily, an ornate doily. So once again, I'm going to place the mask here on the elephant. And then we move on to layering. So it's a stencil on stencil. So for this, I'm going to use the adhesive, the spray adhesive. A good shake and then I'm just going to go outdoors, spray this and come. I think you can hear me. Yeah, the spray at the back of the stencil. Just to leave it air dry a bit so that it just gets a bit tacky. We don't want it sticking. How many of you have had accidents with stencils moving while you were working on your project? Well, I can't raise my hand right now. I've had that too, and I'm hoping this is going to solve. Okay, so I'm taking a chance here, eyeballing my stencil and placing it. Okay, so this one's not going to move. Rest assured, the stencil spray at work. Let's move on to the next step, and I'm loving what I'm doing right now. The next one is the Beaton Relief Paste. I had done... Um, a blog tutorial about 10 days back on this look at the lovely concrete paste here I have the beaton paste here you can see it's nice and just like a fiber paste okay and so I'm just working on this with the spatula you can see that sound from the Nice and thick, but absolutely smooth and buttery to apply. Beat on paste. Okay, and uh, yeah, the drying time is not too bad. You can use your artificial drying method of using the heat gun to dry it up. It just dries. Of course, sun drying is the best. So you can see the possibilities of using this beat on paste in a lot of home decor projects to give you the cemented finish to decor items. So this can adhere on to fabric. It can adhere on to glass, wood, metal. So go ahead, grab your pot and start experimenting. See how little of the paste that I use for the entire stencil. That's a pretty big stencil and I've done a full coverage of that. Not much that I used and I still have excess coming on here which I shall load onto the tub. Ready one, two and three. Yes, there you go. In one scoop I pick it up and I am lifting off any excess from the sides. Do you like what you're seeing? I like what I'm seeing. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry. Of course, use the heat gun for this purpose. 
it's not too sunny outside a bit cloudy it can rain any moment so I don't want to risk keeping this outside at all so let me dry this and then come back Fine, the beaton paste is touch dry now. I cleaned my hands and I also wanted to show you that the roller is nice and clean. Okay, so it is possible to reuse this again. Now let's move on to the next step. Okay, okay so what I'm going to do now is the beaton is uh, nice and dry. I've kept the stencil back. I want to do some slight dry brushing with black so that I can highlight the uh, stenciling, the beaton effect, just to give it a little depth. So what I'm do going to do is just do some random dry brushing, just bouncing the black color, basically on top of the beaton effect, only around the edges, so that it gives you a nice depth to the stenciling. So that's basically what I'm doing. I'm not painting the entire thing black, just doing it here and there so that now when I lift it, you get this lovely shading in the beaton effect. Okay, so it's kind of dark around the edges. Can you see it? Yeah, so you can see that it's a bit dark around the edges and lighter around the center. That's how I want to keep it. Now, as I'm seeing this panel, I'm just thinking why not do the same effect to the background stenciling so let's probably bring out the darker blue the prussian blue kind of the dark ink blue which is there so i'm just thinking i'll do a random uh, spotting of that blue on the background stenciling to just to pop that dark color out brought the stencil back i'm going to keep the background stencil too on top of that maybe around the edges tell me I'm doing right tell me I'm doing right tell me I'm doing right okay it seems right let's see otherwise I could always go back with the lighter stenciling again okay that's not bad okay so I'm just going to keep it subtly dark in certain spots that's it not gonna... all right i have some die cuts here i've used uh, black chipboard to do the die cuts here so you can pretty much understand what this is going to come out as it's taking shape now but i'm still not thinking whether black is a good color or should i make it the uh, reddish tone here i've just placed the black die cuts here the numbers um, and I have the antique gesso here in a nice uh, color. This is Bordeaux. So let me see. I'm going to sample one die cut with that color and then place it and see. And then take a call whether this is the color. Okay. So now it's got an inbuilt texture in it. It's got a nice sandy texture to it. This antique gesso. So I'm just, sorry, I think I was off camera. I'm just painting the uh, black die cut, just basically loading it with the uh, gesso. It's a deep color. I don't want to. Let me see how this looks as against the black. I don't think you can make out much, can you? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what to do? Okay, now that I've painted one. Uh, with the antique gesso i'm just going to paint all these with the antique gesso place it once more and then let's see how it goes all righty i have all the die cuts with the uh, antique gesso on top of it and i pretty much think it's still dark and i want something else to pop out from there do you think i should do some dry brushing with yellow or should i do something with orange I'm back with the dry brushing well not exactly dry brushing but i realized a bit of shading with the gesso when it was wet with the orange gave me a nice shaded effect to the alpha uh, numbers actually 
so it's all about two tones here i think basically what has finally worked in this is the um, shading and the ombre effect the two tone effect on all the areas from the background stenciling to the beaton effect and finally to the numbers on top so they all have the two tones the light and dark play and i think this is how i will freeze the project as to the paint part of it the final part however would be the fixing of the uh, clock mechanism i'll come back and show you some uh, pictures when done thank you for being with me through this journey i think it was a good play of colors and stencils and a lot of techniques to see this blank board come to life if you did like this tutorial give me a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel i shall be back soon with another tutorial thank you bye bye